What is up, guys? And of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with your troll, of course, the Scarinder. And today, going up against Dennis the Minutes in a UU Wi-Fi battle, and I am using my Trick Room team, which it's somewhat viable. There are Pokemon there that might not be as strong as they used to be, as Conkeldor and Sylveon, obviously, and Drew UU. Uh, short after this team was made, now going up against my opponents here, we are seeing some clear threats here: Hexorus, Mianxiao, Swampert. Probably Mega, Zillaby, Metagross, and Crocodile. Now here's the thing, he could either lead with Mian Xiao or Crocodile, both in ferocious leads. So all I can do is lead off myself with Dayenshi, just trying to get a Trick Room up. Obviously I have, I do believe, four mods with Trick Room, and the other ones are offensively pressuring Dayenshi with, of course, Metal Hub and um, Trick Room, right? Moonblast Explosion, Stealth Rock. Um, then we got Pangoro with Sword Stance and the regular set, Reuniclus with... Um, Standard set, we know Psychic, uh, Shadow Ball, and Focus Blast with Trick Room, and so does Hoopa. Porygon 2, Try Attack, Toxic, Recover, Trick Room, and Crawdon with uh, Knockoff, Waterfall, no, Crab Hammer, my bad. Crab Hammer, Waterfall, Opa Jets, and Sword Stand. So, super, super, super aggressive team. Uh, it tends to work sometimes, and obviously not some other times, due to the hyper offensive nature of this team. Now, it only works if my opponent can't deal with it, and. Uh, my opponent has stamina enough to take this on, and that scares the living, well, hell out of me. So, with all that said, we're just gonna go straight at it and see how this turns out. So, alright, from the start here, my opponent's gonna lead up, actually, with Crocodile. And I should say this, luckily, I'm gonna see that he is gonna be Intimidate set, which means that he's not hyper-offensive, at least in that fashion, which also means that his Earthquake won't KO me, since I got some bulk into this, of course, Dayenshi. So he will switch out, clearly, but not want to be, of course, able to risk that, as I will go for Trick Room, setting up this thing in motion just as we start, really, and basically I can ensure that anything that comes in can outspeed the Metagross, having that said, it's still a Metagross, which means everything that I switch in will still hurt, being hurt. So I'm gonna bring in Flay, of course, my old, old, old Pangoro, and, um, He's gonna bring the mole, of course, but he goes for a Meteor Mash, and I have really no options here. I do take the Meteor Mash, but that, that's about it, right? I mean, pull the punch is not an error of killing me, but that's still a lot of damage on me. So I am forced to go for knockoff, going for that KO as it goes to Kurukujal again. And uh, yeah, the Intimidate, well, you know, it does something for my for Angoro. It's still just, he still hurts. Like his, his superpower is still in the will within the area of killing him. So, I think he realized that as our knockoff goes Rocky Helmet, and you know, I get all the residual damage on Prangora really there. Uh, so, he's gonna switch in now Celebi as I went for a superpower, and you guys will see something glorious. This is a crit that's gonna, of course, impact, of course, the Celebi, but you know, not being super effective. Yeah, right, that could have been a 2 hit kill from that area. So, I'm actually gonna force myself and go back to uh, another superpower, mainly because I was really sure I was gonna bring Crocodile here, which clearly isn't. And I am sadly a bit a bit shy of that KO as I'm basically gonna fall through the life orb damage. And the Celebi just keeps on living. So that's dangerous. Honest to god, that is so dangerous. And of course it twists his dimension is back to normal as I'll go into Fulgore. Which of course being a reuniclus. And uh, I'm gonna just set up another trick room in motion because seriously that's all I need. As he goes for Giga Drain on me, actually, probably, actually trying to sack this mon as he realized that things just got a hell lot worse, and he is forced to switch out. Or actually, isn't forced to, but he I probably felt that he had to, as it brings in Crocodile, and uh, this Shadow Ball will do so much damage on it. I'm obviously quiet and just super, super, super offensive, so it's a resisted hit, but it's pretty much closer to its kill. But I am forced to go to a Focus Blast, and I should say, luckily, I do connect that as we got to kick the Crocodile out of this room. So, yeah, now I really don't have anything that actually forces out this Reuniclus, since as long as the Trick Room is in motion, I am pretty much sure to KO almost anything that is coming on the field, as, of course, Metagross is going to come in and fall. I, I, I really thought it would take that damage, I won't deny that fact, though. So, here it comes the Swampert, and I can't want it KO it, and um, all I really can do is bring in Genesis, which of course is my Porygon to the Cancer of UU, and uh, the Twisted Dimension is gonna of course be changed back to normal here, 
Uh, but that doesn't necessarily worry me one bit, and there is for one reason and one reason only. Due to the Porygon 2 is such a powerhouse when it comes to offensive pressure and whatever it can do, um, or not offensive pressure, but offensive defensive capabilities, I know I can take a waterfall or earthquake from this man. So with that in mind, I decide to go for a Toxic as he goes for a Power Punch. I'm all thinking is okay. That that could be bad. That could be bad. So the Toxic might help here, but I'm still in a tough spot. I will be able to take another one waterfall or earthquake, but if it goes another power punch, I am screwed. So um, I'm just gonna go for a safe uh, trick room here as he goes for waterfall. I was thinking, don't flinch, don't flinch, don't flinch, don't flinch, don't flinch, as he doesn't flinch. So we get a trick room up, which is amazing and super, super important. And I can't recover soul against this Pokemon. That is simply not possible after one power punch. So all I really can do now is go for a try attack. At least get an extra damage on it. As you guys will see, that, that doesn't necessarily do anything. As he's going to just kill me with Earthquake. Bit surprised he didn't go for a power punch. But in the end, it doesn't necessarily matter as long as trick room is up anyway. So at this point, I'm going to go to Hoopa. Because Hoopa is super, super, super powerful right now. Um, it always is, but this time, you know, it's very few things that spread it out, as a Shadow Ball should be enough to KO this Pokemon without a doubt, really. And, um, yeah. I do believe it has three more Mons left, and I do believe I have three turns of Trick Room in my favor, at least so I thought, as, of course, the rain stops. So this switch and Celebi, of course, trying to just survive the Trick Room situation, I'm just gonna KO the Celebi. I mean, there's necessarily nothing you can do. As I actually kind of realized that, right, I went for a trick attack or try attack and didn't get KO after trick room, which means that after this Mien Xiao goes down, I am actually out of a trick room, which means the Haxorus can set up against me with Dragon Dance. That's that's actually not good. That's actually not good. There are only so many things I can do against an Haxorus, and I know I can take an Outrage. I know I can't take an Outrage. But if he goes for Dragon Dance, then I win the game. Because I'm just gonna set up another Trick Room in motion. And uh, yeah, he goes for Dragon Dance, which means that this is GG. And uh, it's a very, very, very short game, as you guys can see. But at the same time, he played very, very hyper offensively, and so did I, but just a passive variant of hyper offense. And I, I will be honest, I didn't expect this Shadow Ball to Oko. Um, Haxorus, but then you kind of realize that it's 150 base attack together with, of course, a functional or um, positive nature to special attack, with, of course, being quiet. It's a massive hit, and it probably was a roll, but my god, that looks so devastating. So, alright, you know, clearly the afterthoughts has to come here, you know, what did transpire and whatnot, and while it looks like a super, super easy game for me, one has to realize it was only that easy because I got the Trick Room turn 1 and had that up at all times. So he played a hyper offensive team against me and to be completely honest, I'm slow hyper offense which means I only works in Trick Room as a hyper offensive team. And um, that would have meant that if his Haxorus would have been Outrage set, it probably would have won the game. It's actually that easy because the damage output he could get natural against me at that point was just so severe. Um, it only worked, like I said, because I got the trick room motion really early and I broke through his team with ease due to him lacking the bulk to actually take on hits. Because if you design for hyper offense, or actually if you design a team in hyper offense, you don't necessarily care about the stamina of the team. And hell, I do the same every time. So it was definitely not prepped for trick room. And hell, who, who the hell is, right? There are two mods there that definitely are reconsidered to be less than viable in, in UU and uh, they actually have a purpose though that purpose require a lot of prep and a lot of team a lot of team prep for that to work. So Dennis hope you enjoyed this game and like I said you did all the right plays. I really mean that but with a hyper offensive team it's a very tough situation to be at and try to avoid yourself around Trick Room. It it is that simple. With that said you did all the right plays to try to survive it. So no hard feelings on that one, and you definitely shouldn't feel bad or anything like that. I'd probably lose the same kind of situation, to be completely honest with you. Uh, and for everybody else, thank you so much for watching. As always, of course, make sure to check out my video tomorrow, which will be a bit of a more interesting pocket talk base, which I've been having in motion for quite some time. So with all that said, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye.